passed the test. Bo gave it the uh, thumbs up. That engine is ready to go out the door and go into a tank. Speaking of going into a tank, I just found out I'm gonna get my first crack in the driver's seat of an M1 Abrams. Well, kind of. Wanted. And so before I can ever drive a real tank, I have to be here. Exactly. So this is a simulated driver's compartment. All right, so I come on up. My first challenge, getting into the driver's seat. You're gonna grasp this handle right here, feet first, and slide in the driver's compartment. Feet first? Feet first. Oh my God. It's not really spacious. Right, do you want a demonstration, sir? No, I got it. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm gonna do it. Okay. Now that's the way you enter the tank. Okay. We're gonna raise your upper lumbar bar, okay? Okay. You know, and your head rests. I cannot believe how small this is. Oh, that's the door closing. Pushing that lever down and locking, you're gonna bring your whole body up on that seat. Oh. That'll be your drive. That's my gas pedal. Gas pedal. Okay. That's yep. your parking brake and your service brake. Just like my car. Just like your car. This bag is given to all the soldiers. A lot of motion sickness occur. It's a barf bag. Yes, sir. At this time, you will grab your communication helmet, place it on your head, give me a combo check. Instructor? Yes, I'm here. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead, throttle up, and move straight ahead. Irene provides the soothing voice to reassure me in combat. We're gonna go to the basic driving course. I'm driving 70 tons of metal. Correct. Powered by a jet turbine. Correct. And you've got 40 plus one in the hole. That's a combat load. I got a combat load in here. Yep. To get certified, every Abrams driver must spend six two-hour sessions in the simulator, driving the equivalent of 80 miles. How am I doing so far? You're doing great. Am I? Just keep on going and line your tank up. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. There you go. Sorry. Pull into the right, into the grass, and keep on going go. and go play. Give it some more throttle now. I'm, Don't be afraid. I'm floored it. Now, I can give you all kinds of different... Challenges? How about... Oh, I got a good one for you. What do you got? I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to show you. Here at Fort Knox, I'm driving a virtual Abrams tank. This is where I find out if I have the stomach to drive the real thing. It looks bumpy. We got some bumps here. We got bumps. Don't chicken out on me. It's in moments like this I kind of wish I didn't have fast food for lunch. So <laughs> yeah, this is like one of the most stressful things I've ever done. Show me your stuff and I'll get you certified. You can be going out there and be a, a driver tomorrow. I mean, in terms of uh, first timers. Danny, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Danny? Yeah, I can hear you. Slide out. How do you feel, Danny? I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Throw up? You almost had to use a plastic bag. All right, let's go. I'm seriously gonna throw up, though. Not cool. I feel lunch. I finally get to meet the woman behind the voice. Is that Irene? So do I look the way you thought come I here, would? Come here. <laughs> I was fine until the last 10 minutes and then... It'll get to you. We need to get you a little bit of air, get a drink of water, and just take it easy. Then I'm gonna go use the restroom. Okay, take care. You got the bag? I don't think I need to go into specifics here, but let's just say I'm no longer carrying a full combat load. Back at Aniston, I'm feeling much better. So what's happening right now is they're about to insert the power pack, which is one of the final steps before a tank is ready to roll out the doors. You have the engine right here. You have the transmission right back here. This crane, the gantry crane above us, is gonna lift this thing up and put it right there into that tank. Coming up, of the 55 day process it takes to strip a tank down, build it back up, we're now on day 53. Two days from now, out the door. All right, so it's coming in. Look at this thing. Down a bit. Nice and easy. Ian, just a hair. 
This incredibly complicated power pack is designed to be easily replaced in the field. Crucial when you're stuck in enemy territory. Wow. And it only takes a few simple connections. So literally, hydraulics, electrical, steering brakes, and that's it. Well, you pull one out and have a new one in in 30, less than 30 minutes. This amazingly simple system also speeds up the rebuild process on the assembly line. You guys are basically being told to knock out tanks as quickly as possible because they need it. Right? Yeah, as quickly as possible, as best as possible. Hey, we don't want to send no junk over to them guys in that desert. To find out how we got this shot, check out our website. Well, she did it. She passed the test. She held her water. Now we're taking her in to get the turret and finish this tank off. Can I drive now? I guess that's a no. But maybe it's better if I wait. Because without its turret, an Abrams is like a soldier without a rifle. But before it gets its gun, there's another battery of tests to perform, here in the artillery shop. This overhaul turret sits atop a virtual hull, one of only two turret test stands like it in the world. Oh my God. I'm inside a tank right now. And it's here that I get my first look at the brain and the brawn of an Abrams. You've got to be kidding me. Doug, tell me what we're going to do right now. We're going to spin it around, check the time on it. See how fast it'll go? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, man. It, oh, ho! Oh. We're going, we're turning right now. Real fast. This turret can spin seven and a half revolutions per minute. Speed and maneuverability are crucial in the field of battle, where an enemy can come at you from any direction. Show us what the gunner would be doing, like how it all works. Forward, might just go down. Right? That thing moves fast, Doc. Every time they want to fire the heat or the Sabo, they actually have to go and get the stuff. Now, where's that stuff? Where does that go? Oh, my God. Then he or she literally opens up this closet, takes out the ammo, and physically inserts it. And then the gunner pulls the trigger and, and releases it. All right, Doug, I'm going to take your controls. Yeah. Don't do it all up here. Like that? And then go the other way now. Oh yeah. Hang on. Going for a spin. <laughs> oh. Luckily at this point there's nothing left in my stomach. This turret passes with flying colors. It's now off to meet with its matching chassis. But at Aniston, they do a lot more than just overhaul tanks. So we're about four miles outside of the typical area of the depot. We're now driving into a classified area called the Missile Recycling Center. And from what I understand, it's where there are hundreds and hundreds of missiles which they're taking apart. How you doing? Hi, Danny. Reggie Smith. Nice I'm to meet you, Reggie. I'm here at the Missile Recycling Center. I'm glad you're here. So you take missiles? Take them apart and recycle the components. These are live missiles? Live missiles with warheads intact. I guess this is one of those jobs, if I asked to try it out, you probably would say no, right? Probably so. Yeah. A little nervous, I'm okay. Now we're actually going into the facility to meet up with those missiles and take them apart. We'll also go in here and we'll issue you safety gear. Okay. There's nothing like a white cotton suit to protect you from a missile. Okay, now the next step, we'll put on some leg stats to ground you, and you'll be exposed to open explosives that could be set off just by a small static charge. Okay, so where are we headed now? We're going to the teardown side of the operation. And there's a missile. Roll it out. Roll it out. So step one, we took the missile 